Now I'd like to demonstrate more about ring modulation and amplitude modulation within the excess and some really neat things you can do for special effects. Um, we're going to start here with just a white noise source turned up. We've got noise selected for oscillator A. So this is our white noise going through the filter. Just sounds like noise. So let's turn that down. And in wave C, let's go ahead and select ring modulator, turn that up. So white noise is going to be going to the ring modulator. Oscillator B is going to modulate that uh, frequency. And so let's go ahead and dial in oscillator B to a low octave, minus 6. Select the sine wave. And now we're going to have basically a low frequency sine wave modulating the amplitude of oscillator A, which is the noise. So again, there's ring modulated noise with the low frequency. Here's regular white noise. Now, we've also connected up wave B out into the velocity input. So we're taking this low frequency sine wave and sending it into the velocity section. If we turn up our white noise here, now we can use that velocity of the sine wave to modulate the amplitude of the amplifier here in its envelope. Now notice how this sounds different than if we use our ring modulator. The ring modulator is twice as fast as this. And the reason is, is because this waveform is centered around ground, so half of the waveform is above zero volts, half of it's below zero volts, and velocity, when it's controlling the amplifier, is only looking at the portion that's above zero volts. So it's rectifying the lower half. So, in essence, if you were to look at this waveform coming out of this, you'd just see uh, a nice little circular motion, then a space where that negative portion of the waveform would be, of silence, and then another circular hump. So that's a neat way you can use these different waveforms, like we could select the sawtooth. And again, we're running white noise right through the filter. And we can adjust that mount here. Select a different wave shape. Let's use our square. And now let's use, uh, we'll use the envelope to sweep the pulse width of that. Or we could use the LFO. or we can manually adjust it. So we can have uh, quite a bit of control over amplitude modulation here. Now let's um, go ahead and bring up the ring modulation. Now something interesting happens when we're using ring modulation with the square wave. We're actually kind of controlling the rhythm so right here it's 50% duration. Let's go ahead and listen to that. And now let's modify that pulse width duration to create a different rhythm. So we can get everything from a nice even rhythm to more like a, a horse trotting to uh, almost just flam there. Um, now let's go ahead and select our sine wave again. And now that that's modulating the noise amount, let's go ahead and use the envelope shape here to modify the frequency of this so we get a little bit more interesting rhythmic uh, event happening. And let's select the bandpass to make the noise more interesting. And we can use the LFO as well to modulate the filter cutoff for a more interesting.
and that's really interesting because you're co then combining two different rhythms. We've got the rhythm of this frequency of oscillator B, which sounds like this. It's just because it's a, a swooshing noise. But then when we introduce the frequency of the LFO, we get a second rhythm. which gives us a very natural feel. Kind of sounds like somebody swinging some sticks around in the air and just the whoosh of the air uh, that we're hearing there. Another thing we can do is um, let's go ahead and select let's say a sawtooth. So we've got a sawtooth for oscillator A and you'll notice at this point we've got our CV track set to A-B which means both oscillators are following our playing on the keyboard. If we select ABX, only A will track our keyboard control. B is going to stay stationary because it's looking for the CV input which nothing's connected to. So now our modulation will stay uh, fixed while our frequency changes that we're playing. And this is going to give us more of a ring modulation uh, effect that you might find in the Yamaha CS series which is very musical. Let's go ahead and increase this. Now let's go ahead and introduce that envelope amount because the CS had a nice sweeping to its modulation uh, oscillator that was controlling the uh, ring modulator. And let's apply a little bit of envelope to our filter cutoff as well. Now if we wanted to, we could switch this back to ABX and uh, have both the carrier and the modulator for the ring modulation following our keyboard here. Or we could select AXB, which means oscillator A, which is our tone, is going to be stationary while Let's see, did I say that right? Yeah, oscillator is going to stay stationary while modulation, low frequency oscillator is going to pitch or follow the pitch on our keyboard playing. Let's go ahead and select a little higher frequency. Let's go back to this setting. So this is a little bit more musical to have this tracking and this not. Again, let's turn this down, listen to oscillator A by itself. And now let's modify this frequency. Let's amplitude modulate it with oscillator B. excitement, let's add the LFO to the filter cutoff. Or we could modulate the uh, frequency of this modulation oscillator for the amplitude with the envelope. And notice while I'm holding the note I can adjust the sustain amount to really dial in the frequency I want for this decay to. Thank <laughs> you. 
So there's a lot of neat little things you can do here. Sometimes you can even take, let's go ahead and um, we're going to remove our modulation here. And let's see, let's go ahead and select a sawtooth. So here we've got oscillator B as a sawtooth set at octave zero running through our filter. It's a bandpass. We've got a little envelope sweep on that filter. Let's go ahead and clear that out. And notice now we've cleared out the velocity amount. So oscillator B is being used as an audio source, but it's also being used to modulate its amplitude. Now remember, uh, since this waveform's above and below ground, that we're rectifying that, so it means every other pulse is actually allowing to pass. So we can essentially create half the frequency when we increase this velocity as when we don't. Actually, uh, I should correct myself. It's not having the frequency, but it is uh, it is changing the waveform. If you're to look at it, the sawtooth, instead of going all the way down and resetting, it go down, flatten itself, and then go back up. Another neat thing about the ring modulator, let's go ahead and select a mm, sine wave here for oscillator B, and let's go ahead and set a low pass so we can hear this. and set this to track. So now we have a, a sine wave we're listening to. It's going through here. We're going to take wave B, route it back into the audio input so that it's coming in to the external of oscillator A. This doesn't matter. And we're going to select a ring modulator for C. And what that's going to do is it's going to ring modulate oscillator B with itself in essence, it's going to double that frequency of the sine wave. So we're going to have the original fundamental sine wave here and then a doubling of it here. So let's listen to the difference. Here we hear it one octave higher. And again here we've just got the original sine wave. So you can use this ring modulator to frequency double any of the waveforms in here. So let's go ahead and select a sawtooth. Here we've got the original sawtooth. There's triangle, and there's triangle. Now, it does do some strange things uh, because if you know anything about ring modulators, you've got the carrier signal and you've got the modulator signal. So the carrier signal is basically what we're going to be showing at the output. The modulator signal, every time it goes past ground, it's going to invert that carrier signal. So the phase of this, let's say sine wave or triangle wave, kind of gets rectified looking. Um, so it's not a true frequency doubler, but it is a way to double the frequencies and something you can keep in mind. So that's a cool trick you can use uh, the ring modulator as both an, uh, a VCA, as we showed you with the noise being controlled by the low frequency oscillator, or you can use the low frequency oscillators to modulate uh, the amplifier. But in addition, you can also do audio rate stuff. Let's go ahead and select your sawtooth here. We'll select a square wave. And let's run, let's listen to what oscillator B is doing here. So there's oscillator A, square wave. Oscillator B is a sawtooth. They're slightly detuned. Now let's turn down oscillator B and route wave B into the velocity input. So now we're amplitude modulating oscillator A with oscillator B.
we can frequency modulate the filter with oscillator B as well. And another neat thing uh, I like to do is now that we've got these oscillators detuned, let's select ring modulator for wave C, select wave C to modulator filter frequency. So we're now getting one waveform as our audio, another waveform modulating the amplitude, and the difference of those two waveforms, which is our ring modulator, modulating the cutoff frequency of the filter. You just get some very interesting phased out kind of sounds when you do that. Sometimes setting them an octave apart or more uh, also helps that effect. Select a band pass. And if we want to get even more complicated, we could modulate. Let's say when you're when you're frequency modulating, it's always best to use the lower frequency to modulate the higher frequency. So since oscillator A is set one octave lower than A or B. Let's go ahead and set wave A to modulate B. And we can sweep the pitch of B as well. So we're getting some really complicated sounds out of the ring modulation, FM, AM, uh, lots of stuff we can do here. So play around with that. Hopefully that gives you some ideas to try for yourself.